all of you are good i guess yes please so we are about to start okay i think that the link has been changed okay so maybe most of you are using the old link so kindly tap on whatsapp whilst we are warming up you can tap and we send the link to friends and, okay because i was also using the old link and i wasn't able to connect but later i received the new one so probably someone is also acting like me. Okay. So before, um, in a way, we are trying to wait for our friends. Okay. But, but what did we learn last week? Last week, Monday and Thursday, what did we learn? Anyone to help us with at least a gist of what we did last week? Anyone? Or I should start calling names. Okay. Hello. Z Z hey, Yasin. Okay. Yasin. And say, so last week, we spoke about disposable income. Okay. And then we went on to talk about aggregate savings. And you okay. said that aggregate savings is the total savings in an economy. And okay. to find the total savings, private savings plus government savings. And then you went okay. on to teach us the derivation of the savings formula. Then okay. you also talked about current accounts balance. And you said current accounts balance is the sum of net export plus net factor payments. Yes. Then, All right. uh -huh. okay. then we also spoke about the twin deficit and how to derive the formula. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's fine. Any other? Thank you very much, Yasin. Yeah. Any other? Johnson, I think you, I know your name. So I will call you. Johnson, what did you learn last week? Johnson, you are my co-host. Okay. What did you learn last week? Okay. Mary and Jessica, Hello. do you want to say something? <laughs> Johnson, are you there? Hello. Yes, please, I think we can hear you. Johnson, we can hear you. Okay, so I think 80, we've, we've met a quorum. So we can, uh, we can start. Okay, let's start. Okay, so last week we, we learned about measuring of uh, economic activity, GNP, um, as Yasin said, we did, um, disposable income and all this. I remember we, we also completed with real GDP and nominal GDP. We did a GDP deflator. <laughs> okay. We are going to learn about economic growth. Okay. And I know I've heard this years before. So I think we have all been introduced to the long run economic growth. Okay, remember I told you we have two main um, okay. 
the long run economic growth and the short run fluctuations. Okay, but this time, the long run economic growth. Someone, I think someone is disturbing. Johnson. Yeah. Okay. I think your mic is on. And Kwabina, Margaret. So it's coming from one of you. Kwabina. Okay, so let's proceed. So at the end of this lecture, we are supposed to, you know, identify the sources of economic growth and why per capita income is very high you know, basically why some countries are rich and others very poor, okay? So by the end of this lecture, you would understand from this point, okay? So we are going to explain economic growth and economic development. These words are sometimes used interchangeably, but there are some differences we can explore. Then we will talk about concept of potential GDP and GDP gap. Okay, identify main sources of long run economic growth. All right, so let's set the ball rolling. So I think I, I spoke about this meaning of economic and economic growth and development, importance of economic growth and sources. So that's basically what we are going to focus on today. Now, before I even ask or before I even tell you what economic growth is. What can we say about economic growth? Does anyone here know the meaning of economic growth? Say. Yes. What is economic good? Okay. A, a, a country experiences an economic good if there is an expansion in the potential of the country. Um, please, can someone tell them that the music is disturbing us? Yeah. Please, who was talking? Sir, Johnson, was Johnson. Oh, okay, Johnson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I was saying that a country experiences economic growth if there is a, a, an increase in uh, the potential GDP of the country. Okay, okay. Any other? Sir, please, can you say that economic growth is an increase in the production of economic goods and services compared from one period? Of time to another. All right. Also, been measured nominal or real terms. The last part, where you said nominal or real. It can also be measured in nominal or real terms. Okay, okay, that's fine. Thank Any you. other? Um, say. Benita, you just spoke, right? Okay, so. Yes, please. I'll lower my hands. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. It can be an, an, an increase of goods in the amount of goods and services pro, provide produced per head. Of okay. Over a period of time. Okay, so it basically seems that almost uh I can't say almost like 10% of the class knows something about economic goods. Okay, so all that you guys said is true. Okay, just that for economic growth, our focus is on the real GDP. Okay, so I'm going to take, I don't know if it was Margaret who said this. So I'm going to take the third definition as our working definition for today. Basically, when I talk about production of goods and services, we are talking about the real GDP. Because you remember the real GDP measures what changes in actual goods and services. Okay, so someone can use 
it is a sustained expansion in the production of goods and services. Someone can also say that it, it is the sustained exp expansion of a country's potential GDP. Okay, all these things are in relation to the real GDP. So basically, if we produce more goods and services in a particular country over time, then we can confidently say that the country is experiencing economic good. Okay. And most of the time, people would always compare economic good to economic development. So if the first question is, if an economy is growing, does that mean the economy is developing? Okay. And can also, can there be economic development without economic growth? So these are the two questions that must pop in your mind as students of macroeconomics so that you would get to know the understanding. So we've made assumption that economic growth is the expansion in the country's potential GDP. Okay, basically with respect to the production of goods and services in an economy over a time or a time period. Now let's try and link this to economic development. Okay, so we are saying that economic development is basically the process of economic, um, basically a sustained um, expansion in the capacity of an economy to provide the material well-being of its members above and beyond the level of subsistence. Okay, so of course we can say that we are producing much goods and services, okay, in a particular year in a particular country. But we can confidently say that these goods and services are impacting the life of the ordinary Ghanaians. Okay, so a case where we are able to provide the material well-being of everyone in the country, then we say the average Ghanaian man is experiencing economic development. Okay, economic development could come in so many forms the ability to speak your voice is economic development, okay? The ability to have um, good health, ability to get access to good education. This is what we term as what economic development, okay? So the production of goods and services alone can create development. A case where we get all the other services in place or all the other activities in place, then we can confidently say that we have economic development. Okay, so if I want to convert this mathematically, I would say that economic growth is a subset of economic development. So we we'll take economic development as the broader picture, then economic growth will be a part of economic development. Okay, so now back to my question, can there be economic growth without economic development? No, sir. No, please. No, sir. Okay, so the no comes with um, an, an explanation. An explanation. So, so you just okay. said, you just said economic growth is a subset of economic development. Therefore, okay. economic development has to come first. So if, so there can't be growth if there is no development, basically, because the growth is underdeveloped, is under economic development. That's what I think. Okay, so uh, I like the point where you are coming from. Okay, but there could be a case where we are producing goods and services or our GDP, GDP is very high in a particular um, year, but in the pockets of other people, it was not felt. Okay, putting that aside, the question... so I'm coming, I'm just looking for the one. Felicity. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's assume a case where we produce enough. Okay. But remember, 
when we say GDP, very soon you understand that there are some misuses of GDP, okay, especially with the per capita. There could be a high GDP, but all this GDP is coming from one person. If we should share, you know, people have big, big, big. When we say GDP per capita, basically, when we divide our GDP by the total population, so if we should share it equally, how much each person is supposed to get in a particular period, okay? And there could be a case that, you know, these big, big men are doing billion dollar jobs and all those stuff. So the money is with a particular yeah. sector, okay? Yeah. A particular people. So we can't really, really say that, um, GDP per capita, let's say if it is $2,000, everyone in the country will get $2,000. No, you know, it's yeah. relating to just one particular group. So there can be a case where we produce a lot, but ah, we can't feel it. How many yeah. of us even have the chance to say our minds, even in class? We are even shy of our own colleagues because of how our system works. Okay, so fine, there could be an economic good. Okay, that doesn't warrant economic development. And remember, I gave you some examples of economic development. Okay, ability to speak your mind. That's one. Now, that's why we can be producing in the country and GDP will grow. But how many people can access good health? Okay, don't just take yourself as, of course, maybe you can access it. And when I talk about accessing it, it means sometimes you can go to the hospital and you'll be asked to pay something. How many people are having that money to pay? What is the poverty rate? Okay, so if the poverty rate is reducing, then we can say development is happening because basically it means everyone is getting something in the pocket. Yes, okay. so all that I'm trying to arrive at is there can be an economic good Without economic development, I don't know whether you get it. Yes, we understand. Okay. Yes. So can there also be economic yes. development without economic growth? Um, say, Angelina, no. Senna. It's not possible. It's not possible. No, please. It's not possible. Because uh, if if economic growth is a subset and then the economic development is a, a superset, it means that there is definitely economic growth. It has something to do with it. So if there is an economic development, it means there is an economic growth too. Thank you very much. That's perfect. I don't think I have, I'm supposed to say anything again. You know, this is an info question I asked you, okay? Wow. In MFO, we do some course called Development Economics for Finance. And this was a question we were asked. And I think you guys are really thinking wide. Thank you for, Senna, thank you for that answer. You know, I told you economic development is the broader picture and we have growth inside. So basically, if you even try to disintegrate them, Definitely, you should find economic growth in the development, right? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So basically, there is no way there can be economic growth without economic development. Now, let's talk yes. about some importance of economic growth. Okay, yes. and we said is the sustaining increase in all the production of goods and services in a part in a in a country at a particular year. Yes, sir. Um, so please, I just wanted to clarify something. So you are no. saying that there can there can be economic growth without economic development, but there cannot no. be economic development without economic, economic growth. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So importance of um economic growth. Why should we be so happy if the economy is growing? Okay. Why should we be happy? Remember we spoke about first one. You see, you can see growth and standard of living, okay? First one is per capita income divided by GDP, okay? So when we say per capita income, 
basically the whole idea is we taking our GDP and we divide it by what? The total population. Okay, so if the economy is growing and our GDP is also growing, we assume that the standard of living should be normal in the country. Okay, a case where um, the economy is not growing and the standard of living, then of course, if economy is not growing, we are expecting standard of living to be very difficult or low. Okay, so one importance of economic growth is it improves our standard of living. Okay, it improves our standard of living. So as it grows, we are assuming that more production is being done. Okay, so we are assuming better standard of living for the average Ghanaian man. Don't look at those at the top. All the time, if you look at them, they are always happy and they are always having something in their pocket. Let's think about the ordinary Ghanaian man who can afford three meals a day. There is an effect of what? Economic growth on the average Ghanaian man. Okay, so that's the first thing we have to also know. The second thing is, um, so economic growth improves our standard of living. Now let's look at this. It's just a basic mathematics here, okay? Don't just get confused, it's basic. Now, um, we are going to try and learn how we use economic growth, okay, to project the GDP for the future, okay? So let's look at um, a simple scenario here. It says, according to the World Bank's World Development Indicators, Ghana's GDP per capita in 1960, okay, was 180.98, okay? And this statement there, in 1960, Ghana and Korea, we had the same GDP. And now, yes, we had the same GDP. And we are wondering why now, Korea is far, 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 far better than Ghana, okay? And we will get to understand all those things after the end of this lecture. So these are some of the predictions. According to the World Bank, we had $182. It means when we share our GDP at that time, each individual is supposed to get what? $182.98 if we should share it. Okay, so now, based on this amount there, we are going to make a prediction in 50 years time. So 196 plus, 1960 plus 50 years. I'm expecting something like 2010, right? So yes, we'll be in 2010. Yes, now let's try and make some simple calculations here. I want you guys to just follow. All right, I think I can write on this, right? Okay, so let's look at something, you know, um, basic um, basic finance. So those 200 who will do, when you get to level 300, those who will do accounting, finance, HR, you do something called business finance. And I'm going to teach you how to inflate a figure. Okay, so we are looking into the future. We are going to find for what we are supposed to get. Okay, what we are supposed to get today. Let's say someone promises you 50,000 um, five years from now, okay? And you, or you try to make a savings, that will give you 50,000 five years from now. So you must know the amount you must um, invest each day or each year or each month to get that 50,000 five years from now. And usually we call that that's present value, okay, PV. So this, this PV here is called present value. So you have to learn how to inflate it. And basically, if you want to inflate a figure, we say it's one plus R raised to the power N. Okay, that's what you guys can see here. So looking at this here, we are using um, 
a simple um, calculation, which is a simple calculation, which is um, coming on, which is GDP, okay, GDP per capita for 2010. Okay, so we want to know as of 1960, if our GDP should increase or have a growth rate of 4.6 or 4.036 percent, what will be our GDP in 2010? Okay, that's what we are using. So we can use the GDP or the GDP of today to make predictions for the next 100 years or say 50. Okay, so if you want to find, let's say, 50 years from now, then you are going to say that GDP 50 years from now, so adding 50 plus the 1960, you get 2010. That's basically what I'm saying. So let's say we are in 2021. 50 years from now should give us um, 2051. No, 2081. And I'm a bottom. No. 2071. 2071. Okay, so we can make predictions from today. So if we want to make predictions from today, because we are using 1960, we are going to use 1960 GDP, okay, to inflate the figure. So 1960 GDP, so I've already told you how to inflate the figure. It's one plus one raised to the power N. Now, the one is a constant. We don't really bother. Plus, the R is the rate here. Okay, R here is the rate here. So, some people would want to convert this. Others would want to leave it. So, 4 point what? 3, sorry, 4.036. Bracket close. N. And N is what? 50 years from now. So, if you are able to get this one, remember... This GDP 1960 was given, and it was what 182.98 plus one plus 4.036.50. If you punch the whole of this in your calculator, according to the slides, you are supposed to get what 1323.1. You can also try it. Okay, you can try this on your calculator. Okay, so this is basically what we are saying. If the growth rate of, of per capita income over the subsequent 50 years had been only one percentage point higher, okay, what would be the GDP per capita in 2010? So assuming this rate, the rate here, we add just one percentage point to it. When I say one percentage point, it's basically 4.036 plus one. Okay, so if you add that, you're going to get, of course, this is a typo. This is a typo. So this side is five. Okay, make this side five. Five. Okay, so if we are trying to make this side five, please, did you get this figure when you punch it? No. No, oh, sir. Wow. Did you add the percentage? Remember, it's a percent. Oh, sorry. Okay, yes, I had it. You had it when you add the percentage, right? Yeah, but the decimals were zero, uh, zero seven nine. Zero seven. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh, okay. That's correct. It's correct. It's correct. That's yeah. correct. All right, so you know, this is for um, 1960 to 2010. Now, we are also trying to say that what if this 1960, the rate here, okay, the rate here was increased by one percentage point 50 years from 1960 to 2010? What would have happened? Okay, you would have seen that. The GDP will go twice as what we had previously. So as we increase the rate by a percentage point, this GDP will be doubling. If you like this five year, it's four in your slides, but it's a typo. 
just type the same the amount here all of this sorry all of this side 182.98 plus 5.036 percent raised to the power 50 you should get something like this yes i got it okay so um any other confirmation before we proceed i got it okay so what does this mean i got it this basically means that growth is important okay take yourself for instance let's say you complete school today you and your friend okay and you take a salary that is usually increased by 10 percent and your friend's salary is increased by let's say four percent each year okay let's say by 50 years from the time you guys started taking your salary you are expecting that your salary should be able to increase, okay, by 61% 50 years from that time. Meaning that you would have more fun 50 years from that time than your friend whose salary increases by just 4%. Okay, so growth is very important when it comes to macroeconomic indicators. Unlike um other stuff where you would want to liberalize so many things and just find your way out okay growth is very important that is why we are studying it so as macroeconomic um students sometimes you could just sit down okay 10 years from now i want to get something like 50 million in my account you should ask yourself how much are you supposed to pay each year? Get that 50 million, okay? Now, that 50 million becomes your future value, okay? It's a value you are expecting in the future, okay? So if you are expecting future, this is the future value, 50 million. Now, what is the formula for finding future value? We say it's PV1 plus Rn, okay? So this side now becomes your 50 million you are expecting, okay? At what rate, rate are you supposed to what, invest to get this 50 million? Let's say currently Ghana, uh, if you are doing savings, let's say they pay you 10%. Let's assume they pay you 10%. So we can say here one plus what, the 10%. Um, we are expecting this in five years, sorry. Okay, in five years. So if we are expecting this, it means we are looking for what? The P, the PV. Okay, so that PV basically is the amount you are supposed to pay each year to get that 50, 50 million in your account, okay? So if you punch this, just make, you can punch this. This one will give you a figure. Then you divide through by whatever you get here. And that should be the amount you should invest each year to get this 50 million. Okay, so these things are just not abstract. We can apply them to our daily lives. Okay, we can apply them to our daily lives. Maybe you've, you've been working, you pay you 500 students. And you are expecting to make like 20,000 in a year. You can just do what I just did. Okay. You go to the bank, you ask them how much they are charging or they are paying on borrowing. Like, let's say if you should deposit, how much they pay on it, they will tell you their rate. Then you use the rate to calculate for your future value. Okay. Then you get the amount you are supposed to pay every day. Please, I believe you understand what we are doing. Yes, yes sir. Okay, so what all that this slide is trying to say is growth is important because if you know your GDP, it will be able to help you to know what you're supposed to get in the next years, say five years, 10 years, 50 or 60. Okay, so there was a point in Ghana we had the same GDP with um, Korea and today they are way, way, way above us yeah we above us and what is causing that okay we'll get to know why 
we are still lagging behind and they are just moving like that. Okay. Singapore now mm -hmm. could have um surplus mm -hmm. accounts, then it means Ghana, we need to do more. Okay. Now mm -hmm. Benito, Benita. Okay, so please, uh, for the question we just try solving right now, did you solve for the PR? PR? Yeah. It was PV. Sorry, PV, yes. Yes, PV. So, so with this, with the question I just saw, we were looking for future value, okay? okay. You know, the one here, this one, it's a future value formula. Okay. We are looking at Ghana's GDP in the next 50 years. That's what we've done here. So in the next 50 years, that is 2010. That's what we are searching for. Okay. So yes. in the next 50, we use the current, which was 1960. Then we, okay. we considered, we assumed a growth rate of 4.036%. Okay. And in 1960, our GDP was this. So we just inflated this figure and we noticed that 50 years from 1960, Ghana's GDP is supposed to go up to this point, this amount. Okay. And we are, we are seeing that assuming this 4.036 has been increased by a percentage point. So here I told you it's a typo, here is five. If you put yeah. five here, you will get this. So we are saying that assuming um, we we actually increase this to five to the half into our GDP. Okay, so in other words, if GDP per capita goes by only one percentage point higher, the GDP per capita would have been what sixty one percent higher. Okay, so if we had increased this by one, it would have grown this by sixty one percent. Basically, this by sixty one. That's what we are doing. I can see some other hands up. Yantechi. Um, I want to know if the rate of GDP is constant throughout time and also how GDP percentage, the rate, the rate of GDP percentage increases, like the 1%. Okay, so um, as I told you earlier, this is an assumed value, okay? Okay. Yanteji, this is an assumed value. And this is usually determined by the Ghana um, Statistical Service. Okay, so they would know that this is the rate at which our GDP is growing. So per our current GDP, they will just try, they will do some small calculations. Then they will get to know that this is, Looking at the trend, this is the rate at which our GDP has been growing. So we are expecting it to grow at this rate. I don't know whether you get it. I do get it. Thank you. Yes, I it fix something. It can change any year. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Okay, so these are other importance of um, economic growth. So I remember when I was defining development, I told you about this. Okay, so rapid economic growth allow countries to provide more of everything to their citizens. And if these things are happening, then we have a development. Okay, so better food and bigger homes more resources for healthcare, universal education for children, sorry, better pension for retirees, okay? If all these things happen in an economy, then we could confidently say that the economy is what developing. Okay, so from growth, we could have what economic development. So as we are growing, our economy will be grow growing as well. And as the economy is growing, then the will be a development in the economy. Okay, so what, where are all these goods coming from? What are the sources of this growth? 
Now we are saying that many roads lead to Rome. Okay, different roads can lead to Rome. So many countries have tried so many strategies to ensure that their economy is growing. Okay, so we can take the Great Britain. Great Britain saw the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so when we say Industrial Revolution, basically we are saying that it was the era when um, industries try to employ more technology in their dealings, okay? So when Britain started using more technological um, tools to work, their GDP grew, okay? And this is what Japan also did. Okay, Japan became the world economic superpower by initiate, initially initiating foreign technologies. So the technologies people have already done, they improved on it, okay, to grow their economy. Now, so if I tell you 1960, Ghana had the same GDP with um, Korea, and now Korea is better off than Ghana. This is the reason, okay? They are trying to do more technological stuff than Ghana, okay? And as your technology is increasing, remember, with the help of technology, it makes life very simple and you are able to do things faster than initially you were able to do, okay? So I was telling my boss that I think UG should adopt to this kind of online, okay? It's not about whether COVID or not. Now COVID has taught us new lessons. So I'm just trying to think that for them to employ more students, they should be able to blend this with the online education. So sometimes we have lectures online so that we can employ more students in the school, okay? Whilst some will be at home just doing the online because we can start to stay here in Ghana and we'll be doing online courses abroad, okay? And our certificate will come pe -pe -pe. So why can't we also develop that skills here? Now they want to convert everything back to normal. Low-key, low-key, like this online tool has been helping us upgrade our GPA. And you now you are a testimony, you know. This one, uh, we do good work. We do good work. Yeah, uh, yeah. Our, our GPA is just growing every time. Someone who has never had A now has about six or seven A's. Okay, so in one way or the other, low key, low key. I know all of us in one second lockdown. Anna, what's the matter? Lockdown, we have a basso, we have a basso. Aha, low key, low key. Okay, me cry, me 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 pe loki loki lockdown be the Emma. So basically, technology is really helping us. People have check accounts, whatever, whatever, Betsy or whatever. Question the buy and I know there are two solution, but are you not happy with technology? Yes. 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 So happy. yes this is how we grow as an economy. So if we resort to the manual kind of working all the time, how we, we, we have to stay awake at night, memorize things like we are not okay. Sometimes I was telling my boss, if you could just be different from other universities, that would be fine. The memorization is too much. We learn and we forget everything. You know, open exams. Then you know, open concepts like you can you just read, interpret to us. At least me, I think uh, the best way to learn, rather than they will always subject our brains to torture. We will be in our room six hours reading, memorizing. It's not going. We get distracted and all those. Stuff. Now technology has made things simple for us. We should just adopt as a country. And everything will be fine. That's why I like Baumia for doing this um, data, data. Everything, he will tell you what is the data saying. Everything, what is the data saying? Okay. I really like him a lot because he's actually digitalizing everything that we spoke of.
is coming from or it stems from one of these factors of production. Okay, so we are saying that for a country to grow, this growth must come from one of these factors. The factors I've, I've highlighted here. I don't know why the R doesn't want to be highlighted. Okay, so. So the fact is this one, to grow to happen, one of these factors must be affected. All of them, all two of them must be affected. Okay, so looking at the function here, when you see something like this, kill, whatever, whatever, okay, it's basically the same as this. Okay, so differentiation, those who like math a lot, they will tell you if I say f of this, okay, so let's say y is a function of x. What does that mean? Okay, that's basically what we've done here. Okay, meaning y depends on what? X. With this, it means what? Y depends on what? X for each information. Meaning this Q here we are denoting is our GDP. Okay, so if I tell you GDP is a function of a, F, the, a, the A is technology, okay? The A is a technology. Then the F is a function of what? K, L, R, okay? So we are going to just take this one by one and understand how it affects our GDP. We are left to just four slides, okay? Then we start with our tutorials. So just calm down. So I'm just trying to let you understand this function, meaning this GDP, which is denoted Q here, is influenced by these people, this, this category here. Okay, so we should just get it from there. So the A is the technology I was talking of, then the K is capital. And in macroeconomics, I remember last time I spoke about capital. So when we say capital in macroeconomics, what do we mean? Who can help us? When we say capital in macroeconomics, what do we mean? Johnson. Yes, sir. So when we talk about capital in macroeconomics, it means uh, goods already uh, to further the production of other goods and services. Okay. So basically, when we talk about capital, we are not talking about um the accounting capital we know okay we are just investment here can be capital goods like tractors um excavators all those things can be capital here okay then we know labor labor is the normal labor we know and the r there denotes raw materials okay this the r here denotes raw materials okay now, we are saying that if GDP is produced with this input, growth rate, will, growth rate of GDP will come from growth rate of this input. Already, I remember I told you that the GDP here, the GDP here depends on these people. So if this is increasing, we are expecting GDP to also increase, okay? If these four factors of production are increasing, we are expecting what GDP to also what increase as well. So now we are going to take the factors one by one. And the first one is labor. Okay, we are taking the labor first. You know, labor is related to what? Human resource. So we are going to understand how labor can influence what? Our growth in the economy. Okay, so when we say human resource, we are just basically referring to the quantity and quality of labor input. Okay. So when we say the quantity of labor, we are looking at the quantum of labor supply. Okay, so how many people are employed in the vineyard? That's what we are looking at. Okay, so we are just looking at how many people have been employed and that's the quality quantity of it. Okay, then the quality of the labor would depend on what? Your education, the skills you have, discipline then the last one is what motivation okay so if a labor is highly skilled we are expecting 
perfect um please can you tell your friends that he or she is disturbing So please, can you go on back on the motivation? What did you say it was? The motivation, I remember I said that the motivation is one, is part of the quality of a good labor or do you get it? Yes, I you get know, you. Some people are just motivated to work harder. Okay, so if anything they will just be disciplined and they will just be working they are motivated to do better job especially if you pay them very high okay you motivate them a lot okay. Okay. good so we need the quantity and we need the quality as well for us to what have better production okay for us to have better production, we both need the quality and what the quantity. Now, the next one is capital. As Johnson explained. So with the capital, we explained that capital is not really like the normal capital we know in business. Okay. For macroeconomics, capital is basically um, those tangible goods like roads, plants, you know, I remember I told you excavators, equipment, computers, computer softwares. These are what? Capital. Okay. These are what? Capital. So how does this also affect our economic growth? Okay. If we have good roads, you know, people would be transporting so many things and promoting um, production. Sometimes they could, you know, grow stuff and because the goods, the, the growths are not good, they are unable to uh, transport them and it will be there then it will spoil. Okay. It will be there and it will spoil. Now, putting that aside, if we have good computer softwares, you know, now in accounting, we don't really, really suffer with calculating stuff we have quickbook we have tally we have so many softwares that make life easier okay then we could also have uh, excavators you know if you are a farmer and you want to you want to just get a very high um output you are supposed to just employ this in your activities so that you will have a very high um, production at the end of the time. And remember, whatever you produce as a farmer is always added towards our GDP. And as you are producing more, our GDP tends to grow at the end of the day. Okay, our GDP tends to grow. So that is about the capital and the growth. Okay, so we need this also in what? Um, our production. Now, the last thing I would want to talk about the capital is, you know, if you want to get more capital, then it means what? You are supposed to um, reduce your consumption today in order to save more money to get all this um, capital in place. Okay, so we are saying that accumulation of this capital requires sacrifice of current consumption over many years. Okay, let's say you're a businessman and you want to buy so many equipment or facilities, but you like to buy, buy. okay, small thing, you are buying something, small thing, you are buying something. You wouldn't be able to buy all those equipments you've thought of buying. 
especially if your buying is not in relation to your business, but the business is just for you alone. Okay, for you to be able to buy all these equipment, you need to save. And whilst you are saving, it means you are sacrificing what your consumption for that. Okay, so for this capital in macroeconomics, it really requires a lot of what? Um, savings. It really requires a lot of savings. Therefore, the savings rate is a key determinant of what the economic growth in many models of what economic growth. You know, when you come up small and you want to further after this degree, you will do a lot of models in economic growth. Okay, there you will understand so many stuff. So for capital, you need to save a lot. Okay, then we have something called natural resources, which is which was our R, okay, where we denoted this to be raw materials. Okay, so important natural resources such as land, oil, gas, forest, water, and mineral deposits. Some, so all these things are some examples of raw materials that could also help us to go as an economy. Okay, if we have oil, you know, we can just capitalize on the oil for the oil to do a whole lot of stuff for us, especially, you know, in Ghana, the free SHS, we are getting some of the monies from our oil. And out of the oil, we've been able to create a heritage fund for our kids. So if we are fortunate, I don't know the number of years they've, they've actually placed on that for it to commence. But if we are fortunate, when we give birth to our kids, from that very day till they grow, they will be paid every month, like how the US they do. So that heritage fund, you can read about it. The heritage fund is there for our kids. So Ghana is trying to also upgrade itself. So they've created a heritage fund so that when we give birth and from that day, we will begin to what? Receive some small, small allowances from the government for our kids. Okay, and it is coming from our oil. If we have gas, we have forests. Now they are cutting all the trees. You know, forest brings rain. And if you cut all the trees, there will be no rain for our production. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we have enough forest, which can bring about rain for our product, then at the end of the day, we could also have um, a perfect production at the end of the year. Okay, mineral deposits. Galamse is killing us already. You know, they, they, they buy, the Chinese people will come mine our, our sites, take our goods, go and build their country, whatever. Then they leave, you know. So all these things are things, if we, we focus on them, we would be able to increase what, our economic growth by increasing our production of goods and services in a year. Okay, so if you don't really, really have ample resources as a country, you will lag behind, okay? And you are going to basically, uh, Ghana, they said we are a lower middle income NS, at least by now, if we are middle income NS, it's not bad, but corruption is killing us. The money that is supposed to be meant for, um, some societal stuff is not in the pocket of one person. Okay, splashing it on young people, young girls, and all those stuff. So it doesn't really, really reflect in our pocket. Okay, money is meant for creating jobs. And you guys remember not long ago, I think last week it was a debate. The whole country, the, the whole um, finance minister, signed for um, a document that would give the MPs loans for cars, you know, for cars, 100,000 US dollars. And the sad part is they are not paying the amount in food. They are just paying 40% and government will pay 60% plus the interest. And remember this 60% that government is paying, it's from you and I, our taxes. You might think it's not your problem, but it's your problem because these MPs have cars already and 
they are still going for the loan. So if I decide to go there for four times, I'll get 400,000. I know at least you become half a millionaire already. So all the time, the money is with this big man, which does not reflect. Even I, it's not a... <laughs> we can say our GDP is going, but it does not reflect in our daily pocket. Okay. So we should just also consider our mineral resources and our raw materials. And the last one that tops all is technology. Okay, technology, which I told you, when we say technology, is it, it's you finding a new way of doing something. Okay, so things you've never done before, you find a way of doing it, things, like it takes you hours to do. Now you can use microseconds to do. Okay, if you've been to where they print graphics, you can you you will testify that in just a second they can print like thousand copies in just a second, just a click, bah, everything will just be done. Okay, so technology is really really improving lives, and. If technology increases, it basically increases our whole, um, economic growth. And this is basically the end of our lecture for today. Okay, this is basically the end of our lecture for today. Any question after now? SP. Um, so please, um, with the technology in case um, objectives they bring the software, will you classify it under capital or technology, or it could be both? SP, please, can you come back again? Say, so, please, I said, um, in case they bring someone like uh, something like software in objective, which of the, um, this thing will you classify it under? Is it technology or capital? Because when we're doing capital, you made mention of software. You know, we, we can classify them at on like at each space okay if i say technology software is a technology okay and we are saying that if you invest in capital it means you're also investing in what softwares okay so basically if you are investing in but the whole the, the main team should be um technology because if you generate the technology then people can come and invest in that. And when they are making that investment, we classify it under what capital. I don't know whether you get it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Someone Sir, please, please, what, uh -huh. please what? Well, the recording be sent to us because this is my first time joining, so like I didn't get the yes, previous please. one. Yes, please. You'll get okay. a recording. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Someone is saying they, they have already started using the Heritage Fund. Oh, dear. Dante G, at the end of the day, we Sorry. know our things to be paid. Okay, don't worry. All right. Yeah. Any other question? Um. Yes, sir. You. We learned today that um, as our um, economy is growing, our standard of living to uh, uh, transforms. Okay. So. Yeah. And as our standard of living goes on, isn't that best thing? Um, high cost of living because that is when you, I mean, you wish for more things that you do not have. You know, the more you have and the more you advance, the more things you want. So isn't okay. a better thing cost of living? Okay. So, um, Angelina, right? Yes, please. Angelina. In economics, we have a concept called local non-association, okay? With this concept, what we are trying to say is there is no way on earth will human being be satisfied, okay? So as you are saying, it's true, but 
if we say standard of living, we are not basically trying to say that the economy is making life tougher for us. Basically, the whole idea about standard of living is just simple. You are able to afford anything at your own pace. Okay, so if it is two cities and it's not really, really costly, okay, standard of living don't really make life uncomfortable it means you can afford the minor minor the minor minor stuff in your life okay you you don't feel like you are poor i don't know whether you get it you don't really feel like you are poor you are able to get um your three mil square a day okay and you are able to buy the basic stuff you, you are supposed to get, okay? So rather, when we say standard of living, it's rather you improving on what? Your basic um, necessities, okay? Of course, if we are all buying, 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 there will be an inflation in the market where prices of goods would, would increase. But for now, what our hope is, or what we are looking at is, we are just focusing on how people would be able to make life okay how people would be able to get access to good health good education they will be able to get their basic needs in place so we are not really really focusing on the entire economy at this point okay okay great thank you you're welcome hello sir yeah all right, uh, I wanted to um, address something quickly. Um, those who couldn't, the videos, that's the recorded videos, they are available on our YouTube channel. You can type BHJCR on YouTube, then you would subscribe to the channel and also get all the videos there, all right? So please, in yeah. case you miss any of the lectures, just go to the YouTube channel and you'll find it there, BHJCR, or you can type the Business House Junior Common Room and you'll find it there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hmm. Yes. Your hand is up. Yes. Um, this is a bit off topic, but still relating okay. to um, macroeconomics. That's fine. I want to, yeah, I want to know if the economy of Ghana could grow in the step of the um superpowers like could we catch up with at least or at least half of the economic growth of the superpowers okay you know the truth is we can catch up but it will be in the very long time okay looking at how things are being run in the economy if we don't really change our attitude uh, it will be very tough, but even though we know we can catch up, but it will take time for us to catch up. All that we are supposed to do is to maybe be disciplined, especially our leaders, and they should have us at heart so that they could also think like how we are thinking. And a typical example is what I gave with respect to um, they buying cars. Is that necessary? No that money could be channeled to something different, you know? And because it's involving money, they are all finding a way to justify it, okay? So for us to meet, you know, these big, big people we, we take money from, they don't really, really do those things, you know, right? And we are all aware. Those big, big people, we go for loans from America, those China and all. They don't really, really spend much time doing what they are doing buying cars for themselves, yes. paying their wives, you know? So for us to actually meet up, then it means we have to take some responsibility towards the average Ghanaian man. Nante, you do get it? I do, thank you. Yeah. And so I'll send you a nice, I sent you a nice message in your DM. Could you check it out for me? Oh, sure, 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 I will.
Is it a Bombay? No, your private. <laughs> your private. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Yes, sir. The what I can see here is for everyone, everyone, everyone in Kwang. Okay, so I was asking for the slide. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I just saw that. Sure. So, you, let me reply you, okay. Yeah, me too, I wanted to. So please, I also want the slice. <laughs> so please, can you send the slice? Frank, I think we all want the slice. <laughs> okay, so basically, I'll send the slice to um your BAJCR president, then he will forward them to you, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, what have I done to the school room? <laughs> it's annotating my screen with some toys. <laughs> oh, if this was a normal class, I would have given you zero for yes, class attendance. Hey, why? What is I... happening? Thank you. <laughs> What's happening? You're welcome. You're welcome. Maybe you have virus. Ah, uh, sure. Miss, thank you. I can see some C even there. Guys, uh, let's start with our tutorials. Let's continue where we ended last week, okay? Yes. We yes. have like 30 minutes. Let's try and do something. Can someone tell him to stop annotating on my screen? I think... He's, is a mistake. Oh, I'm okay. cleaning it. If he does All it right. again, <laughs> I'll come and look for him and mafia him. <laughs> All right. So someone is saying it's not advisable to take Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Is it because are you attacking Johnson here? Johnson, I think you're under yeah, attack. Right. I thought. <laughs> okay, so let's let's start with the tutorials. Okay, so we are done with lecture three. Um, let's continue with what we started. Okay, so I think last week we got here, right, guys? We are coming to do some small mathematics. I don't have calculator with me, so if you don't really respond with the calculator as soon as possible. I'll be hot, okay? I'll be very hot. Okay, so let's take the... I think we are here, right? Oh. Yeah. We got here. Question three. So we are asked to compute the gross domestic product, the gross national product, product then what is the disposable the value of disposable income what is the total savings and the last one is what the value of current account okay so let's start um if you yes. forgot yes please i can't see it hey you can't see my screen please yes Please, is she the only one? No. No, sir. You all can't see. No, sir. I can't, I can't see. see. Yes, I see. It's small. I'm zoom it. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. No, you there. No zoom, like maximize the screen. Yeah, basically, that's what I did. No, you the individual should. They know you, the individual. You can see. Yes, fine for us. Thank you. Says better now. All right, thank you. So let's start. All right, so. I wanted to, um, I was tempted to ask you guys to calculate for GDP for me, but I noticed that uh, you're being asked. 
So first, let's um calculus for you know before we can get a GDP, these things are have been de decomposed. Okay, to doable. Do so we have to take them one by one, right? Okay, yes. so um we do some annotation So first thing, let's let's talk about consumption, okay? Let's talk about consumption. What are the three factors of consumption or the three components of consumption? Durable, non durable, service. Thank you. So, what is the value for durable here? 290. Do we have non durable? Yeah, that's this. So, we 170. 170. Sorry. Hey. So, again. One seventy. Do we have service? Yes, thirteen. Okay, thirteen. So if we add everything here, four seven three. Thank you very much. Any confirmation? Four seven three. It's correct. It's correct. It's correct. Yes, it's correct. Right. So can we work with the I? I. What goes into investment? So we said business fixed investment. Business fixed investment. How much? How much? Two eighty. Two eighty. Yes. Plus. Residential investment. One twenty. Right. Yes. If we add this to what do we get. 400. 400. 400. Okay, so net export. Net export. We know the government expenditure is just one. Okay, that's why I'm asking for net export. So how do we get our net export? Total export minus total import. And what is the total export here? Um, 60. 60. All right. Please, are we all following? Yes. Yeah. OK, so what is the total net import? One, 105. Thank you. 105. So if I do the computation for this, what do I get? Negative 45. Thank you, negative 45. So what was the first question? The first question said we should calculate for what got domestic product, right? Okay. Okay, so we can say that GDP, GDP is equals to what? C plus I plus J. Plus I plus J. Plus NX. Oh, yeah. NX. Okay. All right. So, what is our C? Our C is what is here, right? Yeah. 473 yeah. plus what is our I? SP. I can 400. see your hand. 400. 400. 400. Yes. Say so please, will the fixed capital consumption to bracket depreciation has anything to do with the GDP? Oh, no, please, no. That okay. depreciation is just there to confuse you. Okay, okay, thank you. Right. You're welcome. What is our government expenditure? 320, right? 320. Plus our net export. Remember, it's negative. negative it's our put Negative 45. I hope you can see this side, the 45. Yes. All right. So when you add everything, what is the... 1,148. 1, 
Thank you very much. 1,148. Now, the next thing is to calculate for what? GMP. Right? Okay, you let me share my white screen. I think, I think this is better. That would be better, eh? No, this one, we see. No, this, this one is yeah, better. This is better. Yeah, we prepared it. All right, then that's fine. Thank but you. I'm wondering where I'll be writing the. Okay, let's go. If this is better. Now, let's see. What do we need for our GNP? Uh, GDP plus net factor payments. Good. So you see, for all the computations we've done here, we don't have net factor payments, right? Oh. Yes. Good. But when you come here, you can see something here, right? Yes. Good. So yes. now we can calculate for net factor payments, OK? You know, if you have income and you have expenditure, if you are finding for profit or the net, you do income minus what? The expenditure, OK? So look at here. These are the payments we've made. And the, uh, the income we've received from abroad. And these are the payments we've made to the rest of the world. So if I want to know the net, is this minus this? Are we cool? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so now let's come to yes. NFP. So our NFP is going to be what? 35 minus what? 55. We should give us what? Negative 20. Minus. So if that is the case, can we calculate for GNP? Yes. Yes. Our GNP is equal to what? GDP plus NFP. So plus NFP. Now, GDP was what? Thousand one hundred and forty-eight. Sorry. Minus what? Negative two. Plus one two. This is. Uh, one 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 hundred and twenty. Yeah, it's negative. Sorry. Yeah, negative. Negative twenty. All right. Thank you. Negative twenty, which gives yeah. us one thousand one hundred and twenty is. One hundred and twenty-eight. Yes. All right. So we are done with the first question. Can I claim this? Um, excuse me, sir. Sir, so please, can you hmm. slow down a bit? Can I ask a question? Sure. I thought the GDP was greater, so um, GMP was supposed to be GDP minus NFP. All right. So that's your first question, no? <laughs> Please, is that your first question? Yeah, that's my only question. Oh, that's the only question. Oh, okay. So we said net factor payment is so the difference between GDP and what? GNP. Do you get it? Um, the yeah, time, the difference. Good. And the last time, I remember I told you guys that most of the time, the GDP is greater it's greater than the GNP. And this is basically the reason for saying that, okay. as you can see here, all the time, you after the calculation is when you will know that the GDP is greater than the GNP. Yeah. This is the reason. The reason is because we add our foreigners into the calculation of the GDP, and this we just take only the Ghanaian people. That is why our GDP is this is greater than this, okay? But the formula for GNP is what we've written here. This is the formula. Oh, okay. 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 So I if, I, if I bring this one here, that'll be the difference between the GDP and the GNP, which is this. I hope you get it. Yes. Okay. Um, someone was saying, can we slow down? Yeah, sure. Okay, so can I clean this side, this side? 
Since yes. you guys are saying we should do it on. All right. Okay, so what is the next question? We are asked to calculate for what? Disposable income. All right, so can someone give me the formula for disposable income. Disposable income is equal to um, GDP, that's Y, plus net factor payments, plus transfer payments, plus interest payments, minus taxes. So you do all, you do all. <laughs> okay, so can we say that disposable income, sorry, can we say, you remember we, we, said, we, we said that disposable income, I don't know, I want to denote it. Okay, you let me write all. I wanted to do D, D -N or D I for disposable income, but you let me write everything. So she said it was Y plus. NFP plus TR. NFP plus TR. Plus, uh -huh. I plus INT minus, minus T. You know, this is the same as GNP. Hey, hey, please, we can't really see to like. Oh, sir. That's how I've been written. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see this, right? Or this. Like it has become to all right. Okay, so we said disposable income. So I'm just I don't want I don't want you guys to is this okay? Yes, sir, it's okay. Yeah, uh, it's okay. Equals to y plus. NFP. Y plus NFP plus T um, INT plus TR minus T. Right? Please, is this okay? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. I said these two, Y plus NFP is the same as what? Yes. Good. GNP plus what? INT plus TR minus T. Okay. And what did we get for our GMP? 1,128. 1,128. Yeah. Is this okay? Yes. You see, you let me correct it. One thousand one hundred and twenty-eight. What is our interest? Um, fifty. Okay, so plus 50. What is our uh, payment? 40. Okay. The taxes is 250. You see, this work is not difficult. Yes. 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 If only Mary, you phrase your, your hand. I want to ask a question about the terms. Like, I don't really know. So, like, I'm going to say INT, TR, NFP, those ones. What exactly are I mean, you are saying that you don't understand where we had them. No, like I'm saying, I, I don't know the terms used there, like the abbreviation, oh, okay. the INT, the TES. So Afra, so when we say why, why is our GDP? This is our net factor payment from abroad. This is interest rate. This is transfer payment. And this is taxes. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Yeah. So please wait. The total is 968. Okay, 968. Thank you. What is our next question? The total value of what savings, right? Savings. Good. So the first savings we can do as private. Okay. Uh -huh. What is the formula for S private? Okay. That one is disposable income minus consumption. Thank you. Disposable uh, income uh, minus consumption. Okay. And uh, you know we have disposable income here. Yes. What was seven three? Please the total. Mm, it's four nine five. Four nine five. Four, nine, five. Thank you. Four, four nine, nine, five. nine five. Now we are doing as government. What is the formula? Yeah, that one is into bracket taxes minus transfer payments minus interest payment, all into brackets minus government expenditure. Okay, so we know our taxes was 250, right? Yeah. yeah. New transfer payment to be 40. Yes. And the new interest to also be 50. Mm -hmm. We can just do this. And we knew our government this thing to be 320. 320. 320. What's the total? Negative 160. Thank you very much. Negative 160. Now we are going to find for what? S total. S total is the total savings. And we said that it is addition of the private and what? The government, okay. So I'm going yeah. to say four nine five minus one sixty. We make a total of three three five. Three three five. Three three five. Thank you. So what's the ST? Which one? The ST. What's the full meaning of the ST? Oh, total savings. Okay, and thank so you. you subtracted the government from the private. Was this negative? Yes, because we had negative 160 here. Okay. Yeah. So is, there not, is there not any units for the uh, calculations? Oh, these are in CD terms. Okay. So this will be CD. Sorry. Thank you, eh? In CD terms, okay. If I add it here, it will be mania mania, okay. So you remember it in CD terms, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. What is the last question? The last question is asking us to do a uh, Please scroll up a bit. Yes. That's what I want to do. I want to scroll up. Okay, so the last question is asking us to do what? The value of what? The current account balance. Now, what is the, the formula for current account? NX plus NX. Next plus NX. No. Uh, private savings <laughs> plus uh, uh, government, whatever. Yeah. Ah, savings minus investment. Thank you very much. Savings minus investment. Okay. So when I say, when we ask you what is um, the current account, okay, it's savings minus investment. Please do you remember when we did the derivation, we had something like S is equals to I plus C. Yeah. So if I make change of subject from here, right? Because we have our I, we have our savings. 
you are not supposed to just go and you know of course you know this this is the same as um nx plus what nft right NF, yeah so you don't want to go through the stress if you like go and do the nx plus this that's what we are coming to get okay okay so let's use the common formula so that we'll just you know be fine all right so basically the whole of this is a formula work so you can say that our ca is equal to what's our total savings we said three 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 five. Three five. Minus what our investment was. 400. Was it 400? No. Investment. Yeah, investment was 400. Investment was 400. Yeah, 400. Negative 65. Negative 65, right? Yeah. Wait, where did right? we get a 400? Oh. Remember, we oh, added residential fixed investment. Then we added, uh, I can't see what is up there, but I remember it was residential and um, business fixed investment, right? Yeah. Good. Let's try the other approach. Let's try the other approach. When, so, first approach, you know, in exams, if you are getting confused, you have to find so many ways to run away. Okay, find so many ways to run away. Okay, so I remember I told you that CA, CA is the same as what? Net export NX. plus NFP. Yeah. What, is, what, what did we get for net export? Mm -hmm. What did we get for um, net Factor yeah. payment. Negative twenty. Negative twenty. Negative 20. When you add this to what do you get? Negative six. Negative five. So please, in exams, we just open to these questions. You'll be fine. Okay. Negative two. So. Negative sixty five. Okay. So, this is what. Um, we win by calculating for GDP with a question like this. Okay, we can also do the same, today, but if I start this, we won't finish. It's 12. So, this is the real GDP nominal GDP. Unless maybe you tell me I should do it. And you send the question to the group. Okay, so when I'm sending the slides to Eben, I'll add it to your set. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. So, guys, let me say thank you for your time. Thank, thank you to you. Thank you. you. Please, I have a question. Okay, Mami Kumiwa. Yes, and please, in the heading for the previous question, this question we just saw out in the table. Okay. You want the headings? Like the question we just saw in the heading, it says in millions of Ghana cities. So I'm asking if it will affect the amounts written in the table. Oh, okay. Mami, well, give me one minute. I was trying to clean something. So this one. Okay, so, this, so it means everything here is in millions. Okay, so it won't affect anything, okay? So this 290M, 320M, 13M, 280M. So we've taken the M away. So it shouldn't affect anything, okay? Any other question? Any 
any other question? No, sir. Hi, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Bro. Thank you. Too. Can you send these questions to the platform?